So yeah, I, I have been a ham for, it's shocking, a little over 30 years. Um, can the 6AFO got me into QCWA here a little while ago. Oh, good Lord, six, seven years ago, just when I first uh, was was able. So anyway, um, I was, I was going to say this, this presentation started out being the one that uh, Ken uh, provided. The other Ken, is it V6AGR, I believe? Uh, so I, I did uh, throw in some of my own stuff here. This presentation started out kind of being a um, partly a sales tool for a, for one model of um, of Whisper transmitter, and I've got another one. So I I just trying to make it a little more generic. All right. So Whisper is the weak signal propagation reporter, um, and uh, it's a digital mode. Um, it's transmission only. Uh, it's not a two-way thing. Uh, Joe Taylor, K1JT, uh, who's been incredibly influential. I, I can't think of anyone else uh, in, in our generation who's been more influential, um, you know, for digital modes. Just tons of them um, have, have been spawned by Joe Taylor. So, you know, hooray for him. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Whisper excels at being receivable below the noise level, and that's because it's it's a it may be low power, as Jerry said earlier, but um, very slow transmission, and so you linger on any given frequency for a period of time, and the noise averages up and down and up and down, but the signal stays steady, so uh, so it ends up being receivable. And there's more to it, but I don't want to uh, I don't even understand it that much. Um, it, the, it is largely automatic. Um, yes, there is reception, but it's not with the same unit. My, mine is a transmitter only. Uh, most of the people who, who receive, they either have a dedicated receiver um, or, uh, uh, or maybe they just use their, their main HF rig when, when they're not using it. Okay, a uh, good place to start, whispernet.org. And we'll, we'll look at that here in a few minutes. This is just an incredibly busy uh, screen, but it says in a 10 minute period, it's just, I don't know, it's just showing everybody who's on at that time. That's incredible. A lot of people do use it regularly. So the idea is again, just, just um, to test your antenna, presumably, and, and propagation in general. So you could you know throw together some sample antenna, you know, like a, a J pole for 10 meters or a, um, a new dipole, inverted V, uh, vertical, whatever you've got. Um, and you try it for an hour maybe and see what see what you get. And then you, you can switch to a different one and see what you get. The one catch with that is that propagation can change from now until an hour from now, but um, you can still get some really good indications of, of how well your system is doing. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Learning about propagation is really, really a big thing. I, uh, I'm i not an expert. I would think some someone like Gord, who's on the call and is a, a, a major contester, would um, have to understand propagation very well. And I'm sure uh, Jerry and others um, are quite uh, well versed in it. And I know a fair bit about, you know, I've never studied it, you know, per se, but I, I just have played with it. Um, so yeah, it's it's shocking to see how far your system will reach, and generally with very low transmit power. And you can compare antennas with other people. You could loan this off to a friend, uh, or they may have their own, and you can both run your systems at the same time. Yeah. And yes, it's largely automatic, so you can set it to go and and uh, and just walk away and i'll sh show you how you can do that i don't know how lots of fun it is it's it is it's interesting definitely um but uh, but it's it's very informative that's for sure now a couple of things you can a couple of ways you can go here uh the hard way <laughs> i i modified this slide a bit um now you you get a piece of software the most common being wsjt uh, x um, again joe taylor um, you configure that software and if you're already using ft8 um, or, or similar modes that wsjt 
uses, man, you're, you're pretty much ready to go. But if not, you'd have to get the software, configure it, um, get a computer interface like a signal link, or maybe you're lucky like me and, and your, your radio has a built-in um, a USB to serial or USB to um, a sound card interface. Um, yeah, I've got two radios that, that have that. Uh, though I, I bought a signal link a while ago just so I could remember how it works. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to have one with the USB sound interface, but signal link or uh, what's the other, um, forgotten the other major manufacturer, but there are a couple of them out there that, that create those uh, interfaces for your sound card and control. Then you have to get that to work. You have to get the audio levels all right. And then, and then leave your computer and radio, maybe your only computer and your only radio running. Okay, that um, can be tricky, but you know, maybe maybe you're all ready to go and, and you just need to figure out how to use WSJT. Hmm, um, that would be nice. But anyway, this, this easy way is, well, it started out saying, get a whisper light transmitter, but I threw in or Zactec because that's the one I have. Um, by the way, there was an article in QST, the uh, main magazine of uh, AWRL, a couple of months ago or three months ago, I forget exactly, might have been September or, or August, um, talking about this specific transmitter. And, and <laughs> I had to wait a little while to get mine because I'm sure 10,000 people ordered them all at once. But the, the, you know, the rush should have died down by now. Basically, you, you get a free app and um, connect this thing to your transmitter and uh, do a wee bit of, uh, or connect it to your computer and do a wee bit of configuration. Very easy and, uh, <laughs> and wait. All right. Whisper Light is um, from Soda Beans in the UK. Um, in many ways, it's very much like the Zactec that I have. USB powered, 200 milliwatts output. You can just run it from a just a battery pack that puts out that five volts, right? Uh, pretty accurate power level for comparisons. This one runs on just a couple of bands, but you can add other bands with external filters. Okay, um, the Zactec, you just buy the appropriate one. And then they've got their own um, <clears throat> website called DX Explorer. All right. <laughs> How you pronounce that, but uh, uh, for doing analysis, or you can use the Zactec transmitter. Um, yeah, again, 200 milliwatts, uh, accurate power output, can run standalone or um, or with with the uh, you know with it connected to your computer. There are several models for different band combinations, uh, but the most popular is 80 through 10. There's one that includes. Um, you know, I think uh, the 470 meg, 470 kilohertz band and 160, <clears throat> and there's one that includes six meters. You know, you just uh, pick the one that's most appropriate for you. And there's also in this guy a little simple signal generator. I'll I'll show you that. Here's what it looks like, but I'll actually bring up the uh, uh, what the the software looks like. I'll bring this actual software up in a minute. This is what DXplorer looks like. Um, it's a fairly sophisticated app if you want to get that um, that model out of out of the UK. Last time I was on their website just recently, though, they're sold out. I'm not sure when uh, they'll uh, have more. But um, Zach Tech um, and he's oh good lord, where's he? He's somewhere in northern Europe, one of the Scandinavian countries. Anyway, uh, last time I checked, he still has uh, models available. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> that D Explorer website has some cool tools to let you. You'll have to forgive my messy desktop; got a lot of things going. But uh, hopefully, you're able now to see the Zactec uh, transmitter configuration software. Um, so this uh, this device has a GPS receiver built right in. It's incredible. It's only, you know, um, I don't know, is it like 10 centimeters by 15 by two? It's, it's, it's tiny, um, but it's got a GPS module in and it comes with a GPS patch antenna. 
I've just got it running over to the window and it's just sitting in the window and you can see it's currently picking up a whole bunch of GPS satellites. And so very quickly, it determines the time, 1.28, uh, when it stopped transmitting, it's not transmitting at the moment, it's just waiting. Uh, and it knows our position, or my position is uh, in the grid square, a maidenhead grid square, DO30AV. That's pretty accurate. I really wish I could get it to tell it, tell me the position in latitude and longitude as well, uh, maybe in a future version. Now here, it's, it's actually started transmitting. Let's have a look at this. Uh, I didn't have to do a lot to configure this. Uh, first off, I just... When I plug the unit in, it's USB. So it, you know, computer chimed and installed a virtual serial port. Um, I went to my device manager to figure out which port. It was port three. Great, there we go. Uh, there's a boot configuration tab. You can make this a signal generator when it boots up. So it just outputs and you can, you know, test a, a receiver with it uh, only issue with that is that it's uh, it's at a constant output. It doesn't vary the output, but you can add a uh, an attenuator uh, easily enough. Or of course, whisper beacon or just sitting there idle. Okay, that that's what it's going to do when it boots up. So if I were to say uh, whisper beacon and go down below and save the settings, then I could disconnect from my computer shut down the software, uh, and just connect this to uh, an antenna. And it would then start transmitting as soon as it powers up, uh, whether it's connected to just any USB power source. And, uh, you know, your computer doesn't have to be running. Uh, your, your main station rig doesn't have to be running. And if you wanted to use it as a signal generator, look at this, you can get very accurate down to the <laughs> centihertz down to a hundredth of a hertz, I don't know. It, it can um, be fairly accurate because it's using uh, the GPS uh, uh, software uh, to, uh, to set its frequency. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, I haven't tested yet to know whether it's accurate to the hundredth of a hertz. Hertz, that seems asking a lot. Okay. Anyway, back to Whisper Beacon. The version that I bought is for 80 through 10 meters. And so the firmware talks with the software here. And again, this software I just downloaded from their website, um, from the Zach Tech website. And uh, it, it knows that those are the bands that are available. So it, it has those little green squares. You can see that the uh, 630 band is a possibility with a different version. Oh, and the, the, the uh, that 170 kilohertz band as well, 2,190 meters, good Lord. <clears throat> the antenna I'm using right now uh, is not resonant on 30 meters. Uh, so, and, and the transmit output is not enough to trip my automatic antenna tuner. So I'm just not testing on that band right now. If I wanted to, I'd have to, um, to set it up, <clears throat> you know, uh, to tune it with my other rig running at 10 watts or so. Uh, and then I could just lock it in and run on a test on that band. But anyway, I've, I've checked which bands I want it to transmit on. You may just want to do a test of one band, so you'd only um, ch check that band. Um, but here I've got five bands selected. And what it does, as Jerry mentioned uh, right at the beginning, yes, it, it transmits for two minutes um, on any selected band. And then here it says pause after last band, 30 seconds. Um, I believe, yes, it does pause anyway between between bands, but there's there's certain time slots that it will transmit in. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Uh, transmit schedule every two minutes, okay, or 10 or 20 or whatever. Um, you can get quite sophisticated, like you can say only when moving. Well, look at that, because the GPS receiver uh, helps the unit figure out that it's moving. Uh, location, automatically created by the um, GPS receiver. You can switch it to manual and type in 
a location um, if for some reason it can't pick up the GPS signal. If I were to select send a more precise location, now it would send the full DO30AV. Believe it or not, right now with the two minute transmission, this is only able to send my call sign, um, the transmit power level, and DO30. That's really it. <laughs> if I want to add the AV to be more accurate as to where I am, uh, it suddenly has to switch to a four minute transmission per band. <laughs> So it's slow, yeah, it is very slow. And that's that, but that's its key uh, to, to operation, okay. Reported power, 23 dBm, that's 200 milliwatts, okay. Um, to the best of my knowledge, that doesn't actually change the transmit power. Um, I don't think this thing's smart enough to do that. There's no in internal attenuator that I'm aware of. Um, but what you could do is put in a, you know, inline, I've got here, um, oh gosh, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a little attenuated, where's my camera right there, that I could put in line, that is um, a 30 dB attenuator, ooh, <laughs> if I wanted to transmit at minus 7 dB, or I could get a 3 or a 6 or whatever dB attenuator, and then when I know what transmit power level, I can just select, and notice, yeah, it goes all the way up to 60 dBm. Um, 40 is 10 watts, 50 is 100 watts, 60 is a kilowatt. But really, yes, um, Whisper is a low power mode, generally speaking. If you start transmitting at even 100 watts, you're going to be probably um, blasting other, um, uh, the, the, the receivers uh, of everybody who's monitoring this channel. And, uh, and they're not going to really like it that much. So, you know, most people keep it at five watts or less. And of course, the reason five watts is kind of the minimum. If you look at my Kenwood um, uh, main station rig here, the lowest I can dial it down to is five watts. Um, again, if I put an inline attenuator, yeah, I could go lower, but um, that would be five watts, 37 dBm. Yeah. All right, so you know that's how the software works. And this has been running for some time now. I'm just going to go to the website. And here it is. Okay, so it's whispernet.org. Uh, you can create a user account uh, if you like. Then you can go to the uh, activity page. I'm currently on the map page, and this is kind of the most interesting one to me. Uh, actually, I'll scroll down first, and here you can specify a certain band, or it says all for low frequency, medium frequency. Okay, uh, who do you want to look for? Well, you want to look for yourself quite often, but uh, you can leave it blank, um, and then it'll show everybody. You can center the map on your location or some other location. You can set it to a default zoom level. Uh, show a time period, and well, let's just go back up here and click update. Boom, there it goes. And so I'll just zoom in a little now. And I've been I'm I'm I've been going for about an hour now, so there's quite a few transmissions. Um, and you'll see there's there's quite a few in Canada. Uh, Ross V6ARS has been hearing me. Um, guy in Ontario, VA3ROM, I know him, I uh, just can't remember his call, I mean his name, um, lots of guys in the U.S. Now, I was running 40 meters here the other night, and there were people in Hawaii listening to me, um, Mexico, it was incredible, with 200 milliwatts, that's just mind-blowing for me, um, 200 milliwatts, let's see, um, I can switch to maybe 20 meters and see what we get. 20 should give us a little greater range. Oh, there's an EA8 station. Is that the, uh, oh, I forget the name of those island, the Azores or something. Wow. Okay, so 20 meters. And you know my antenna, I, I don't, 
Oh, I'm not on my Yagi right now. It doesn't have the best uh, directivity anyway, but I'm on my off-center fed uh, dipole here. So it's, it's you know, just a very common antenna. Uh, Hawaii, a couple of guys in Hawaii. Um, this one is, one of these is a little suspect. I'm just going to zoom out and show you. Okay, VY0ERC. Oh my goodness. Um, is that uh, at alert? Uh, the Air Force uh, radar station might be, but this one I've noticed this guy before, KM zero DCO. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's supposed to be in San Francisco, so I, I'm not too sure about him. <laughs> he may have just entered his location incorrectly. So you can see it. This is a really useful tool. But uh, if you want to get a little more detail, um, you go to the database page. Now it lists everybody who's heard me on a specific frequency, and it shows the signal to noise ratio. Look at this. The signal is 20 dB below the noise level at this guy's location, K1RA, uh, 3,100 kilometers away. That is mind blowing. Uh, my, uh, minus 29. <laughs> Here's somebody who's only minus five. He's I'm blowing his doors up. <laughs> Still five dB below the noise level uh, is just amazing. Three dB below, but this guy's still 1,589 kilometers away from me. All right. So yeah, um, you can do all the analysis on this you want, and um, for people who like analysis, that is phenomenal. Uh, for people like me who uh, don't care that much about the analysis. It's just kind of fun to look at uh, the map as much as anything. Okay, there's a forum so you can chat with other people. Um, the activity view is kind of ugly, and uh, you end up with this great long bar that just keeps going. 20 meters always has hundreds of people on. Uh, oh no, that's 80. 280 stations heard. Okay, so really just, just to kind of recap, um, there will be a lot of stations clearly listening for whisper transmissions, and they're just doing it out of the goodness of their hearts, their hands, just like you or I, and they, they either have a dedicated whisper receiver um, that's just hooked up to a dedicated antenna, or maybe they're... Um, uh, just, you know, whenever they're not using their main station rink, something like that, right? Um, but then for any, and some people are transmitting all the time too, and I really don't know why. I mean, it, I guess they, they think it's fun, <laughs> but uh, for most of us, it's, uh, it's, it's a useful tool. Um, I do want to maybe just try one more thing before I uh, give up the, the, the chair here. I'm just going to get this software going uh, on a specific frequency. So I'm just going to stop and say, let's just use 40 meters for now. Okay. And it'll be on a certain frequency then, and I can uh, go and have a listen. And you don't really hear an awful lot, but I'll, uh, let's see. Okay, there it's coming up now. And let's just see if I, where did my mute go? Right, it's, I'll turn it down. It doesn't sound like anything, it's just a tone you would think, but you can, you can see it pulsing, the power levels varying, and the frequency would be varying very slightly. Okay, uh, that's the whole key is that it's, just pushing that very small amount of power through an incredibly narrow bandwidth. Um, and you could see, I had it set up the other day, but I won't have time today to get it going again. <clears throat> multiple, you could listen for multiple transmissions at the same time. And they're all just packed into this super narrow window. Okay, um, I'm actually going to shut that down because I, I just remembered one last thing I was going to do. Uh, WSJT. Okay. If you don't want to buy a dedicated unit like this, <clears throat> though, I never mentioned price, hundred I think it was $139 US or something. 
It's not terribly expensive. Okay. But I, I just brought up WSJT, which is great. Many of us use it for FT8, right? But you can switch the mode to whisper. Okay. So the same software will work. Right. And let me just bring up the other screen here, the waterfall screen. And let's see. I'm currently on my I'm on the wrong frequency, probably. Do to do. Let's go to 40 meters. Okay, I'm on 40. Okay. As soon as this thing starts transmitting again, it would come up quite clearly. Um, let me just turn on my receive antenna there. That there we go. Now you can see right centered around 1500 hertz, there's a green bar. Okay, that is the whisper window. I think you could probably tell it, force it to transmit elsewhere. But right now you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, half a dozen um, transmissions. And each time you do, your unit transmits on, um, uh, on a certain band it's going to pick a slightly different frequency within that narrow window, window that's only 200 hertz wide. You know, so there's minimal overlap. And right now we're hearing, you know, six, seven transmissions. Some very, very weak, as you can see here uh, on the spectrum analyzer view. I have no idea what this signal is here down at the bottom, probably completely unrelated, okay. So anyway, yeah. Um, WSJT works fine for this as well. And if we wait just another minute, we'll uh, once it's done here, uh, it will show who has been received. So, you know, you, you don't have to go out and buy a dedicated system if, uh, if you've already got your computer set up for, uh, computer and radio set up for digital mode uh, and you're using WSJT, just switch your mode to, uh, to whisper. Right. And you, like I say, you can crank your power down as low as you want to go um, because most people are using anywhere from, uh, you know, five watts on down to mere milliwatts of power. I think some people actually um, kind of compete with each other <laughs> to see how low they can go. Here we go. Finish that transmission window. So now it's decoded one two three half a dozen signals and there's one there it couldn't quite figure out who that was okay uh, and you can see this guy was transmitting even though he didn't get his call sign at 37 dbm uh, this guy's in cm 87 okay um, the different you can see a differential in time because time the start of the window is important and then you can see the signal level relative to the noise level incredible very very weak signal mode weak signal propagation reporter right okay so i think that's it for me i may have gone on longer than i intended to as i often do shall we have some questions if anyone has questions well first of all thank you very much joel i learned a lot i learned tons in this short presentation i had no idea um, so thank you for that and the live demo. That's You're that's welcome. amazing. I have a, a few questions of my own, if I may. Sure. Uh, you mentioned the bandwidth, just about 200 hertz for each signal. Um, actually, sorry, let me jump in before you carry on. That's the entire band for all users of Whisper. Oh, yeah. yeah. The the individual signals. I mean, look at this. Here's oh, here's my guy. He's transmitting right now. Um, there's that 200 hertz window, and mine is using, I don't know, I, I forget the, the I, I have read what the actual bandwidth is, but you can see if this from, from here to here is 100 hertz, that signal is maybe 5, 10 hertz wide, incredibly narrow. Okay, yeah, it's very, very narrow. That that sort of gets to to my question, because... I think for FT8, the each signal is about 50 hertz wide. So you can get about 60 times 50, which is three kilohertz in that bandwidth, about 60 signals. Yeah. Everyone was perfectly spaced out. 
Um, so one of the questions I had was, um, what if you're transmitting on the exact same frequency that somebody else is, uh, that if there's hundreds of stations transmitting simultaneously, um, and also, I guess, like FT8 or whatever, you have to uh, um, coordinate the start and end times, which I take it you get from the GPS signal. So you have a very accurate time base. You don't have to uh, install on your computer like I've done with my PC, uh, uh, whatever that time four program is. Uh, I guess you get all that directly from GPS. So yeah, yeah. Does this um, is it because the such a narrow bandwidth? Uh, it's unlikely that you'll be interfered with somebody, be interfering with someone else. I I would say statistically your your odds are pretty low of being right on the same frequency. Um, you may be close enough to someone else who's transmitting at a higher power perhaps than they ought to be, uh, and and some of the 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 noise broadband noise from their transmitter might uh, um, might. Uh, cause your signal to be less well <laughs> received but generally yeah there's not going to be a lot of overlap but um if uh if somebody is um transmitting on by bad luck right on the, the same frequency or plus or minus a few hertz of you um typically the stronger signal wins um if you're very close to each other like you know within 3 db or something yeah yeah maybe neither of you will be decoded um but uh but if you're if you're you know say I don't, I don't know what the number would be six or ten db stronger chances are you'll you'll win or the other guy will if he's stronger um as far as timing goes yes for sure um that's part of the reason the gps modules included in this unit and the uh and the uh, whisper light module as well um it gets you accurate to within you know milliseconds um, but um, even if, uh, you know, if you're just using your standard um, desktop computer or, or laptop, whatever, but it's, um, it is, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, its time has been updated fairly recently, you're, you're going to be close enough for most purposes. Um, that's why you do see that, um, that differential time uh, DT here. Uh, you can see this guy's plus half a second. This guy's plus one second. Uh, if you get much more than that, then yeah, the the software will kind of choke and and won't decode it. But um, but you know, so you've you've got a fair bit of leeway there. You don't have to be accurate to the to the millisecond. One of the things that I've noticed um, from from this location anyway in Alberta is that there's um, at times, a very um, it's very disjointed between uh, transmitting and receiving. In other words, the transmitted path may not be the same as the received path. Mm -hmm. um, case in point, uh, for many, many months, I've been trying to reach several grid squares in Indonesia on 40 <laughs> meters in the morning. And I, I, on FT8, and I can see there, I'm receiving them very strongly. I'm, I'm sending out 200 watts or even 300 at times. And I look at the PSK reporter and they don't hear me at all in this region. I'm being picked up in Japan and in Australia. So to the North and to the South, but um, nothing <laughs> in between sort of thing. Uh, it may be because of the way my, my inverted V is, is uh, oriented or just maybe something strange with propagation. And uh, Yeah, so of course the, there are a couple other possibilities. Yeah, that, that non-synchronous, uh, no, what do you call it? Um, reciprocity? Reciprocity <laughs> is, is still debatable, but, um, but I think it's been proven, you know, not, not beyond the shadow of a doubt, but it, it's pretty clear that uh, to most people that, that there are conditions that cause one side not to hear as well as the other. But a couple of things, of course, that you, I'm sure you're aware of, is that the, their station may be dealing with a higher noise level than you are, um, for one. And the other is that maybe um, somebody else is transmitting right on top of you, um, especially with FT8. That it, it's much busier than than Whisper is, um, and the transmissions are a fair bit wider. So um, that does happen. I've I've 
<laughs> transmitted and transmitted and, and just going like, how come that guy can't hear me? He's working everybody around me. And it's just, that's, there's so many possible answers here. Uh, I was just wondering if, if Whisper might give some, uh, some answers to that. Um, well, it would be interesting if you could be using your transmit Whisper transmitter and the guy at the other end. Uh, if, if you could contact them by email and say, hey, could you get a whisper? I'll send you a whisper transmitter and both of us will transmit at the same time and and um, and we can compare notes. You know, that that's probably what you need to do, but it would be interesting. Obviously, you probably don't have the same antenna and the same output power, but within reason, I think with your both running less than a watt or something like that, then you could probably make some conclusions on that it'd be interesting to see yeah do you know if anyone actually um takes the the data or has been taking the data over a longer period of time over months years whatever and compiling that into sort of propagation maps what's heard from where and what time of day that sounds like a good uh <laughs> a good phd uh, um thesis uh, a topic but um, I, I haven't heard of anyone doing that um, not to say no one is um, that would be that would be really interesting yeah the data is probably all there yeah yeah though I just don't know how long they keep it um, because if we go back to the, the whisper website let's just see I think there's the longest time period you can ask for is 24 hours um, but if you were downloading every 24 hours, um, you know, and keeping it on your machine, um, I guess you could you could build up that database. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and anybody else have some some questions they'd like to throw at me? Or I have a question. Sure. How did you set the frequency? I know how to do that in FT8. Sure, uh, um, but so yeah, I, you don't have to. That's the answer. It's it's really quite straightforward. Um, now I'm in Whisper. Uh, sorry, I'm in WSJT here. Uh, I'm not transmitting right now because my little uh, Zachtech unit is still transmitting. But um, all I did was say I want to use. It's a little messed up there, but it's it's seven megahertz. Boom, and it automatically goes to seventy thirty eight point six. Um, I believe you can go into a menu here in this software and edit that if you like, but that's a, a an agreed upon frequency for the 40 meter band. Um, what it does after that is that it throws in just a little bit of um, randomization so that, you know, everybody isn't transmitting right on the same frequency. They, you know, they'll all transmit plus or minus 100 hertz of that frequency. So, so that's just another way it keeps it simple, right? And by the way, yeah, this Zach Tech unit is still transmitting, and it tells you exactly what frequency you're on, <laughs> that it's transmitting on, right down to the hundredth of a hertz. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I have another question, actually. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, for those stations who have a whisper uh, receiver going all the time. Uh, I would assume that you have to have some protection from transmitting nearby. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, you don't want to blow the, the front end of your receiver, mm -hmm. your uh, whisper receiver. Do they have a very um, high end or very uh, narrow band pass uh, for receiving? Or is that something? That... <laughs> Not really. No, I don't think so. Um, most of the dedicated whisper receivers I've seen, well, I've only seen two or three of them, um, are quite inexpensive. And so they, they have a bandpass filter, but not a, uh, not as narrow as, you know, the 200 Hertz band or something. So yeah, if you, uh, if you're going to start firing up your, your main station rig, you may want to, um, uh, uh, disable your, your whisper receiver while you're doing that unless the antennas are well separated or, you know, you're on different bands and, um, and the antennas are separated. Yeah. Or you might want to let it run when you're not actively using your station. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But some people do, you know, they, they have both going at the same time. They just like, I've got a, 
um, I've got my uh, hex beam on the roof and I've got my off center fed dipole going from the front fence to the back uh, to the garage. And I've got a, a one of those MCOM two antennas, uh, chameleon, I think, um, going from the fence on the side up to the back, you know, up 30 feet up a pole. That's far enough away from the other two that it would probably, no, I'm, I'm sure it would be fine uh, if I were using that one for receive um, and I were transmitting on a different band, I'd be fine. I, I just probably wouldn't transmit on the same band at the same time. So you're using all, all those different bands on one antenna, is that right? Yeah, this this antenna is resonant uh, in at least, you know, um, <laughs> within a three to one SWR of the frequency um, used by uh, by the um, the radio on each of these, except for thirty meters. So, so yeah, you do so want to make sure you know these things are fairly robust. Um, they uh, they <laughs> this thing is incredibly simple though. It uses a little amplifier. 200 milliwatt amplifier, well, it's probably a little more, um, that is designed for transmitting on twisted pair lines. Uh, and they they uh, they modify it so it'll work into 50 ohms. And then they just switch in with relays, the, the appropriate bandpass filter, um, and uh, and that's it. Um, and the receivers are, are pretty darn simple as well. So um, there's, no, there's no band data or cat type interface for this so that you could automatically choose a different antenna when you go to a different band? No, no, that would, that would be pretty cool. But, uh, but, you know, if you're, if you're going to do it on your main station rig, um, obviously then that's fully under your control and, and that's, yeah. a, that's another possibility. But with these little guys, I think that the, the real key these days is getting units out into people's hands at, at a very, very reasonable price. Um, in, like I say, you can get the this transmitter shipped to you um, all in for, for, it was under $200. So you, and the receiver would be very similar price if, if you wanted to get into doing that. Um, a lot of people never do. Um, if you're really cool or, or um, <laughs> you know, you think it's all really cool and you want to do it, great, but uh, a lot of people don't bother with that half. Um, even... Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, maybe... The history the history of this, I think, wasn't Whisper available prior to FT4 and FT8? I think it came out as a, um, as a means of tracking propagation long before these other modes were around. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't know the history uh, to any detail, though. Uh, all I remember is, you know, just <laughs> vague memory of, oh, yeah, it's been around a while. Um, there actually is, um, by the way, I should mention, uh, I'm using WSJT right now. There is a Whisper software also created by uh, Joe Taylor and, and others um, that looks a lot like this, but it's I think it's pretty much obsolete now. Um, because the same functionality is just built into WSJT and they haven't been supporting it. So that that kind of is a hint that maybe that, that was around before <clears throat> um, modes like FT8, yeah. Well, because I think FT8 uh, and before that JT65 was mm -hmm. uh, more popular, they came in and, and sort of uh, replace the need for Whisper largely because now with PSK Reporter, you can see where you're being picked up from those other modes as well. Uh, yeah, to some degree, um, though, uh, you know, I, I haven't looked into seeing whether you get very detailed um, propagation, not propagation, but signal level numbers and all that. Uh, um, Anyway, there's it's still a very popular mode, put it that way. The problem with doing that with FT8, for example, is it's so crowded that uh, you know you may not be heard properly. Mm -hmm. Whereas Whisper is is seems to me to be almost uh, you know devoid of all that clutter. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's generally you're going to get like you can see here. There's in this one time period there were uh, ten or so, eleven people um, transmitting and they all got through just fine. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> that was me all transmitting in that window there. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to leave anybody else out. If there's anybody else uh, with a, a question, don't forget to unmute yourself and, uh, and ask away. So <clears throat> I'm just a little bit unclear. You're using the same software for both transmitting and also receiving. Like if you set this up and you just sit there, it, be it becomes a receiver and would report out to the internet. Is that how that works? Uh, yeah, this this uh, WSJT software will do that. <clears throat> it right now is in just uh, monitor mode. Uh, if I were to click the enable transmit button here, then it would become a whisper transmitter, but it's right now just a whisper receiver. Uh, notice there's a checkbox here, upload spots. I could have pointed that out earlier. Um, if um, if you have checked that, then it, or by default is checked actually, uh, then it will upload to whispernet.org, uh, that, that website that I showed you a few minutes ago. Yeah, so it's um, uh, there's probably a lot of people using this software, and, and that's probably where a lot of those come from. Um, yeah, um, the other the other software here, um, the Zach Tech software. Um, it's, it's not tied to a receiver. It's only uh, for the, the, the Zach Tech transmitter. So uh, it, it doesn't have that kind of capability. The other thing is tuning the frequency that's shown. Um, if you like, I'm not as comfortable with the concept of either not having a cat or having a cat, but the idea is if you've got just a sound card interface, mm -hmm then you have to manually tune your radio to the frequency that's shown on. Uh, well, um, if you've only got a sound card interface, most people have a more sophisticated setup than that. But, um, but if your interface is only um, audio in and audio out, yeah, then <clears throat> you would, um, because yeah, a signal link, I'm thinking of signal link, um, it's just for um, audio in and out and push to talk, right? So yeah, it doesn't set your frequency, but with a lot of people like that, maybe the radio does have a, a serial cat port, even if it doesn't have USB, and then it could still be setting the frequency for you. But yeah, if it doesn't, then uh, you would, I guess, have to be very precise on what frequency you want to set. Um, you wouldn't do it with the Zach Tech, but you would with with um, with the with WSJ tier. Uh, here it would tell you right there go to 7038.6 and if you hover over it look at that it says usb all pretty much all data modes are um you're, you're going to use upper sideband doesn't matter if you're on 40 or 80 or 160 uh just all um all uh, digital modes typically are upper sideband and then you go to 7038.6 or um if I, you know, if I go to another band here, you know, uh, 160, it's 1836.6 uh, and so on. 18, it's 18104.6. <laughs> they tried very hard to be uh, consistent. Well, we may have mined out all the questions. Yeah, I, I was going to oh, say, uh, I received yeah. you earlier when you were on 14, on 20 meters there. Oh, okay. I just missed it in the chat from the log from, uh, uh, was it Whisper dot? whispernet.org right Doug. And where and where are you you're somewhere in california i'm down in colorado oh colorado right now okay yeah like i'm um well my technically my address is blackhawk but i'm not i'm closer to a, a, a smaller town that's similar to brad creek called uh nederland okay but uh yeah i'm, I'm just straight west of uh north denver okay yeah, yeah, I know that area. I've, I've been to Denver a few times. We had a Denver office there years ago, and and then I visited a company called Freewave in uh, in Boulder a few times. Um, okay, the radio equipment supplier that we used to sell. Anyway, um, yeah, okay, well, cool. That's that's great to know. Yeah, I was getting out to you. Um, yeah, all right. One one more thing I yeah. just uh, discovered as we were talking. Can you see the map? Yes. So this map, um, I can do that. This is uh, DX Maps. No. Yeah. Okay, Wonderful. and there is a mode for Whisper. Wonderbar. 
So I thought I had just turned all this off, but um, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference if I do that. Um, get all the digital modes off, but but whisper. Oh, no, I <laughs> turned them all back on. Anyway, um, there's V6EI mm -hmm. nice. on 40 meters where he's being picked up. So you can, uh, you can use this uh, tool as well uh, to see where, where, who's being picked up wherever on, with whisper mode. Right on. Uh, I'm just trying to remember. I just just had one other thing occur to me that I wanted to look at before we shut down here. ZachTech.com. Yeah, it is ZachTech.com. And then Whisper Transmitters. Um, they've got a mini at 20 milliwatts output. The LP1 is for the lower bands. Uh, let's see. Um, so there's all sorts of units on this website available. And here's the so-called desktop unit, though it makes it sound big. It's not. It's it's really quite small. Um, I was just uh, trying to remember what frequency bands are available um, in options. And it's... Uh, I, I just thought I could remember that I remembered. I'm pretty sure six meters is available, um, but I had kind of a niggle that that maybe even two meters was available, but um, but it may not be. Anyway, you can check this site out, and uh, I, I think it would be kind of cool to have a two meter, or even seventy centimeter version of this um, for someone who's into uh, weak signal modes um, on the on the VHF UHF bands. Uh, I haven't been doing anything there. For a while now but um, I think that could be quite useful you know run it for 24 hours day night and see what happens um, yeah I think that'd be cool if anybody else was was on <laughs> that's the problem your signal doesn't go far enough uh, for anyone else to be listening unless you organize that but anyway uh, that's that's them the shop site uh, they have some interesting uh transmitters look at this the pico it's got solar little tiny solar panels as well and that is meant to uh go on a balloon perhaps um if you want to if you want to launch yourself a balloon as as our friends over in saskatchewan did here a few months ago um there's another variation of that okay there's a whisper receiver currently out of stock they they do have it and you could uh, keep your eyes open for that if you want or you could just like i say use use uh, wsjt okay so i i guess i'm not going to get the answer that i wanted here um get all sorts of accessory stuff that's really all i i cared to uh, to look for okay so um i think i might have to depart here shortly but um yeah i'm uh, glad to have been able to uh, to show this and uh, you know whisper i think is a really useful mode and something i'm i'm you know i just started playing with it not that long ago myself so i've been hearing about it for years uh, i can imagine i will pull out this little transmitter you know a couple or three times a year make sure my system's still doing what i think it should and if i get a new antenna then absolutely hook it up <clears throat> yeah excellent job wow that was Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you.